This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Carrie Hummingbird. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm doing beautifully. I'm enjoying this wonderful night and my family and this beautiful full household and being in the closet so I can record this interview with you. (laughs) Uh, That's really cool. You're like a little hummingbird in its nest. I am a little hummingbird in its quiet nest filled with clothing. (laughs) (laughs) What part of the world are you in right now? I live in Austin, Texas. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, do tell me which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history. Well, I am a soul guide and a healer and a messenger of light. And I'm connected with the Evolutionary Business Council and Teresa de Grobois, who recommended that I connect with you. Oh, the amazing. You should say amazing in front of a name. The amazing Teresa de Grobois. (laughs) Amazing. That's wonderful. I'm glad that you took her lead and, uh, you know, connected with me. I appreciate that tremendously. So tell me, who did you learn this ability from, this ability to help people understand or even just be their guide for their soul? You know, I woke up about eight years ago and left my life behind and ventured forward into a whole new possibility. And so I learned from a number of teachers at that moment that I was open and willing to learn. So it's been a journey. I've studied with lots of different teachers, primarily earth-based spirituality. Hmm. So as you've looked through your family, right, uh, those who are close to you, even friends, is there someone that's similar in that perspective? You know, my dad was really someone who, my stepdad, Uh, who became my dad when I was five years old, he was always very philosophical, you know, always having these really philosophical discussions with me and provoking my mind. And I remember my parents in the 70s sitting around the table, having these conversations about spirituality and God and the universe and what's it all about and what are we doing here? And, And I remember, you know, wanting to sit at that table and just listen to everything that they were saying. And it was fascinating. And it was a moment in time and it definitely left an impression Hmm. so for those who are listening where's the best place to connect with you my website is carriehummingbird.com and that's k-e-r-r-i hummingbird.com now was hummingbird your original name or did you put on that name spirit gave me that name so i had i had a vision you know i had a vision of uh I was manifesting my home that I'm currently living in and I was having a drum journey and, you know, seeing myself in the house and, you know, manipulating the energy so I can have this house. And, and basically at the end of the vision, I did not anticipate this, a hummingbird rose up through the kitchen window of the house as I'm standing in my vision, rose up with, with rainbow light, boom, there it was. And my whole, everything in me was in awe. I was like, wow, that wasn't me that made that. <laughs> I didn't make that happen. That is so cool. It's this the hummingbird. And as it turns out, I ended up, the phone rang the minute I stopped the journey and I got the house. And when I moved in, the lady told me that there was a hummingbird nest right outside the kitchen window. Wow. Exactly where I saw it. That's mm-hmm. amazing. I know. <laughs> I have a friend in Trinidad. He has um, what is considered, a, it's the name of the place is called Yeret, and it's like the home of the hummingbirds. And it's really an amazing experience. So it's on top of a hill, and we go there rather uh, intermittently, yeah, sometimes once, twice for the year. And he's an amazing guy. Like he has, he, it's amazing. But the hummingbird is truly a masterful creature, isn't it? It's a messenger from spirit. The, the Carol shamans in Peru say that the, the hummingbird uh, travels from the earth up to heaven and back down with the messengers and brings a light. So it was a messenger. Yeah, I'll definitely connect you to that guy, right? Well, at least yes, even please. his Facebook profile page thingy that he does, he does a picture every single day. It's really oh. amazing. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, you definitely love that. Well, that's awesome. Well, do tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. 
Over the last three years, I have practiced the art of butterfly medicine, another animal, another being on the planet. But butterfly is the one that is the only one I know of that completely transforms itself. You know, starts off as a caterpillar, goes into the cocoon, loses everything in the messy soup, and then out of that soup emerges a beautiful butterfly. And I've been practicing the art of butterfly medicine for myself and my clients for the last three years. And it's uh, it's evolution, right? And so it's super engaging. It's sometimes challenging. It's fascinating. And you learn more about yourself. It's a beautiful experience. So how does that work? Please explain more. Absolutely. So it's about opening up to these higher powers in your life, these bigger presences on the earth. And mariposa, mariposa butterfly, is actually an intelligence. It's an intelligence that can guide you towards the things that you would be well served to reconsider. So it's a process. And so what happens when you start in this path is that life starts to happen for you in a way that makes you aware of the things that in your life that you need to change or that you would be invited to change to come up with a new way of being that's more expanded, more joyful, more loving, all the things you say you want. And once you begin down the path, it's sort of like life is totally conspiring the entire way to show you these things so that you can become aware of them. You can make a new choice. And it's changing the energy. It's working with um, epigenetics and quantum physics to actually change through the energy your expression of your DNA and your expression of yourself. So the shamans say we heal seven generations forward and seven back. So when we do this healing for ourselves and we, we transition from who we thought we were into who the greatness of who we can be from our soul, we actually are healing so many more people than just ourselves, where it's rippling out. It's like, it's a butterfly effect. and <laughs> It just ripples out through the whole world. Mm, that's amazing. How does it make you feel when you're awesome. doing that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's like, within the second, I mean, she help? says, awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes terrible and sometimes awesome. Depends on what part of the cocoon I'm in, right? Um, You know, it's challenging work in some ways because you've got to explore. You've got to be willing to explore things about yourself that sometimes feel uncomfortable. But in that space of exploring that uncomfortability, you discover something new about yourself. And as the energy shifts and lifts something really beautiful is exposed underneath all that, which is, you know, what I like to call the divine spark. And, uh, you know, touching that divine spark, experiencing it, feeling it permeate and expand actually feels ecstatic. It feels really good. So it's a wonderful experience. Amazing audience. You're hearing it live from Carrie Hummingbird. (laughs) Boom! Yeah, definitely an amazing energy here tonight. Well, Carrie, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Carrie, what is your earliest childhood memory? You know, this is this is a tough one. This is really the impetus and the reason why I'm on the journey I am today is I had a pretty rough childhood. So my earliest memory is my stepfather at one years old, one and a half, maybe two, leaving the room. He had a a guitar and he was playing the guitar and I was fascinated by the guitar. And he left the room and he said, don't touch my guitar. And he put it on top of the bed. So I'm like two, I think. And of course, what do I do? I reach my little hand up there to touch the guitar because he said not to. And it made a sound and he heard it and he came back in. And my first memory is is that moment where his hand, you know, just hit me, hit my face and just came down. He was like seven, like six foot five or something. So from that one memory, I remember the entire layout of our apartment. I remember my mom cooking in the kitchen. I remember the smell of the, the hamburger that she was cooking on the stove and the skillet. I remember running out there and crying and having her turn around and, and pick me up. I just, I remember so much from that moment and I, it was pivotal because in that moment I chose, and I didn't know this till a couple years ago with the Evolutionary Business Council, we had a healing session, a constellation where this came up for me and the agreement I made for myself at that earliest childhood memory was it's not safe to play. Hmm. And through the power of epigenetics, what I'm talking about with butterfly medicine, through the power of epigenetics and transformation, I was able to clear that because clearly I can play, right? I mean, (laughs) (laughs) I, I like to play. Playing is fun. 
But it's kind of like when you have one of these embedded agreements from your early childhood that colors your whole existence, you can be um, playing really hard just to prove you can play. You can be um, not playing because you're scared to get out there and play. And so the idea is to transform the whole thing entirely so that that's not even a factor in your life anymore. You're free of it. Hmm. And you can be who you naturally are. Wow. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind with that memory? Yes. I'm intrigued by your stepfather. Uh, I'm glad that you found the connection within your uh, personal story. But I'm intrigued by uh, what uh, the power of the hand is, if you would, because he, I'm guessing, if he can play it well, then it means that he can single out every string to come together to make one sound. But then the power of the hand in itself and what that can do. And I'm looking at the, the, the memory from the perspective of, as individuals, while we in our own entity are very strong and very powerful, it's one thing, but it's so important to get into the finer aspects of what we can do to create music, if you would, and be very careful what we do as one person, as a whole. Uh, and I, I tie it back again to the small steps that were necessary for the caterpillar to then become the butterfly, if you would. Uh, I just find it really intriguing, the aspects, or the, the aspects of your stepfather with his hand and what can happen what we can do to create music as opposed to create pain. That's so beautiful. Yes, because he was creating music. He was creating beauty and I was enjoying it and I wanted to be part of it. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted that to be my reality. Yeah. You know what, and, you know what it looks like as well to me? Like one, one, that hand can be stop or that hand can be come. And you know, it's really intriguing, like with your fingers, like you never say stop with a hand signal that's your fingers fluttering. It's usually your hand going up as one, right? Yeah, uh, it's as, one whole stop. Yeah, yeah, and there's an energy that goes with it too. Exactly. But if, you, if you're if you saying come, you know, come and learn this, it's usually your fingers like doing that type of role, right? Like, like yeah. um, just like the guitar. And it, I think it's really amazing how how one thing can change, one motion, one flutter pun intended, can change so much in our lives. Can change everything. And it can be the catalyst for us to discover ourselves as well. Yeah, exactly. Because it doesn't necessarily have to be the come. Sometimes it can start with the stop. But then, uh, as you've experienced through the pain, uh, the growth now, to then catapult or, catal or be the catalyst for so many other people. So sometimes it doesn't always work like the fairy stories, right? Where it's the good, good, yeah. good, good, good. You know? Sometimes it's like, well, I guess the fairy stories are on point. It's like Cinderella, right? It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the pain. Yeah, Cinderella, exactly. But the pain, the pain is a catalyst. And yes. I think a lot of people try to avoid the pain, but the pain is actually a catalyst for a greater growth. It's, yes. it's a catalyst to understand. And it's something that because of that early pain that I had in my life, I was able to really be compassionate with other people. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. All right, my friend, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? I liked Kenny Loggins and I'm all right. I used to pl have my baton, you know, and be doing twirling things with my baton in my room, playing that song and singing it. Oh, <laughs> I think it's that, that Footloose movie. I really you, liked that. You are definitely all right. Love it. Carrie, well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly. Here. Are you ready? Yes. Carrie, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Absolutely. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. Or about three hours a week? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what about screen time? The phone under the computer, is it more than eight or less than eight or hours a day? Eight hours. A day. I don't play eight hours a day. I do a couple hours at a time right. every day. All right, Carrie, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Carrie Hummingbird, what would you say that is? Well, I'm going to have to let Hummingbird speak for me. And the statement is anything is possible when you believe. Love it. Carrie, this is such a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? 
Well, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I think this is such a cool project. And what it really highlights for me is how many amazing people we have in our world. And the amazingness being how different we each are. We're so unique. Each one a unique thumbprint. Each one supposed to be here. Each one beautiful. Mm, love it. Definitely love it. Totally agree with you. Carrie Hummingbird, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you, Angel. You're welcome. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.